Hello and welcome. This is going to be our part three video on absolute value inequalities. In the previous two videos, you'll notice the absolute value was always centered around zero. That's actually not always the case. If we want to move the absolute value from the center at zero, that means that we need to put numbers inside the absolute value. So let's take a look at how that works. Again, I'm going to have a combination of typing things and writing things with the pen tool. So if I put down anything on the screen, please write it down as well, and we'll go through the notes together. Here we go. So, hmm, does the absolute value always have to be centered at zero? The short answer is no. And you can tell where the center is by looking at what is inside. We would say the absolute value has a center of h if it's written as x minus h. So sometimes when you see the minus sign, and this is from our linear um, equations unit, this is what's called a built-in minus sign. But if you don't want to worry about whether or not you have a built-in minus sign, just ask yourself, what would make the inside of the absolute value zero? If you can figure out what number you would plug in to make the inside of the absolute value zero, that is going to be what your graph is centered around. So let's do that. Looking at our first example, x minus 5. So, hmm, if I said x minus 5 were equal to 0, well, I would add 5 to both sides. This means my center is at 5. If I were to say, hmm, what would make x plus 3 0? Well, x plus 3 equals 0, minus 3 minus 3. My center would be around negative 3. Similarly here, we have more numbers. But when we care about where the center of our picture is going to be, we only need to look at the inside of the absolute value. So what would it take to make x minus 1 0? Add 1 to both sides. So my center is going to be 1. And now you guys are experts at this, right? Whenever you want to know where the center of your picture is, it doesn't matter what's outside of the absolute values. It only matters what's inside the absolute values. So what would it take x plus 9 to be equal to 0? Take away 9 from both sides. So the center would be at negative 9. Now, if I wrote that down too fast, uh, don't forget, you can go ahead, pause the video now, and go ahead and write it. What we're about to do is we're about to use our knowledge of the center of the graph with our knowledge of the less than and the greater than to help us graph these inequalities. We may need some inverse operations along the way, uh, but that won't happen until the very end. And of course, Always feel free to pause the video and go back if I did things a little bit too quickly. All right, so our first example. Now, if I were to think about where the center of this graph is, I'd ask myself, okay, uh, x minus 4 is got to be equal to 0. So my center is going to be at 4. So on the picture, uh, where I'm going to think is I'm going to think right there. This arrow, again, it's not part of the answer. It's just focusing our thinking. Now, when I read the absolute value, this is saying that we are less than 3 away. So if I were to think, hmm, 3 to the right, that would be 7. Okay. 3 to the left, that would be 1. I have to be less than 3 away. So that means I will stay close to 4. My center is at 4, and I have to be less than 3 away. Hopefully some of you right now are saying to yourself, wait a second, Mr. Fleming put open circles, and that's certainly incorrect. It is. So over here, you see we have a bar underneath. That means that we should have a filled-in circle at 1, and we should also have a filled-in circle at 7. And there you go. This is our first absolute value inequality that is not centered at 0. It's actually centered at 4. So let's go ahead and let's try a second example. And let's just do it in another color for fun. So here, 
I have an absolute value, and I want to know where its center is at. So I'd say, well, what would make this zero? X plus two could be zero. So my center is at negative two. And when I read this, it says that the absolute value is greater. So this means from my center, which happens to be at negative two, I want to be more than five away. So I could count five units to the right. One, two, three, four, five. Open circle, for real this time. Or it could be five units to the left. One, two, three, four, five. Now, if my absolute value is greater, that means I want to push away. I could be six away, seven away, a uh, hundred away. I got to stay away from this center number. And there you have it, our second absolute value inequality. But when I look at question three, here's something that we haven't seen before. We have exactly one number outside and we have one number inside. So we got to think to ourselves, uh, what should we take care of first? Uh, it turns out that you want to take care of the outside before you work your way to the inside. So first I'd say, well, how do I get this absolute value all by itself? Because that's what's happened in every other question that we've done up until this point. I would start by taking away 4 from both sides. So the absolute value of x minus 3 is going to be less than 6. So just like last time, I would look at this and say if x minus 3 equals 0, what would x have to be to be 0? My center would then be at 3. So I'm thinking about 3. And I have to be less than 6 away. So I could count 6 units to the right. That would be at 9. And I could count 6 units to the left. That would be negative 3. And if my absolute value is less, that means I want to stay close. So I would like to shade in between. So when faced with the decision, you have numbers outside the absolute value and numbers inside the absolute value, please use your inverse operations to remove the numbers outside the absolute value. This then allows you to think about where the center of your picture is going to be, and then you can count the proper number away. Notice I didn't count 10 units away, and that's because my absolute value was not isolated. Whew. Okay, last question. Question four. This absolute value has not one number outside the absolute value, but two numbers outside the absolute value. So we'll have to deal with this gentleman here and this gentleman here. Like previous things we've worked on before, we will start by adding or subtracting to both sides. So I could add 6 to both sides. So two absolute values will be less than or equal to 10. I could divide by 2. The absolute value of x plus 4 would be less than or equal to 5. Like previous examples, where is my center? So I look inside. If x plus 4 was equal to 0, this means my center is actually at negative 4. So center equals negative 4. So I'm thinking right around there. Now, how far do I want to be from 4? That's where I go back to reading. So this says the absolute value is less than 5 away, less than or equal to 5 away. So I would count 5 units to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, put it in a filled circle. And I would count 5 units to the left, over here at negative 9, and I would shade in between. Again, when the absolute value is less than, this is saying, please stay close, uh, don't go too far away. So at this point, uh, we've now understood that absolute values don't have to be centered at zero. If we want them to be centered at something else, we need to place numbers inside the absolute value. But that doesn't mean that we still don't have to take care of outside the absolute value. 
So in questions three and four, we had to use our inverse operations to get those numbers away so that we could determine where the center is and then determine finally how far either close or push away from that center number. At this point, uh, please go ahead and try the third assignment. And if you are brave enough, go ahead and watch the fourth video and try the fourth assignment.